So I just got a text from one of my students that's making over a million dollars a year with one of his dropshipping brands. And the crazy part is, he's basically doing the complete opposite of what every single dropshipping guru is telling you to do right now. There's no bid caps or cost caps or launching your ads at midnight to increase your performance by 10%. It's really just boiling down to a painfully simple process. And I know this because it's the exact strategy that I taught him over nine months ago. So in this video, over the next 123,000 seconds, I'm gonna expose the exact media buying blueprint that I use to know exactly when to kill my ads, but more importantly, when to scale them without wasting a single dollar of ad spend. So you no longer have to autistically tweak your ads for hours and pray something hits, but only spending a few minutes a day in your ad account scaling your brand so you can finally buy that $65,000 Ralph Lauren cowboy jacket you've always been eyeing up. Now, when it comes to testing, I know your head is being pulled in so many different directions. There's ABO and CBO and Advantage Plus, and of course, some random advanced media buying strategy that our new guru that just popped up this week is pushing you to get you to buy their course. And I've been in that situation as a dropshipper where I try out all these different strategies, go through all these courses, I'm constantly tweaking things and obsessing over little details for hours every day. And as a result, all of my campaigns are incredibly inconsistent. Nothing's really sticking. And it's a lot like trying to grow a plant. If you're spending all day watering this plant, changing the fertilizer because you didn't get the results you want after one day and you're trying all these different things to make it grow, you usually end up drowning the plant. So in my situation, as someone who has hundreds of students and I have access to all their ad accounts, I see millions of ad spends. So I know what testing strategy consistently proves itself more often than not. When it comes to testing, I don't like CBO. And I understand that you may be thinking CBO is the best thing because all of my spend is just gonna go to the best creative. That's the best way to optimize and not waste a single dollar of my ad spend. And in theory, that sounds right if Facebook knew 100% of the time which creative was going to succeed, but it doesn't. I want you to pay attention to this creative right here that spent $2 over the first five days. So naturally you're gonna think, okay, Facebook didn't like it. It's not getting any spend. So therefore it's not a winning creative. It is clearly a loser. But you don't know that because you haven't spent enough money. You can't make an actual right decision if you're not getting enough data. So I decided to give it a bit more time, let it actually spend and see what happens. And what ended up happening is that this creative spent 800 pounds, more than all the other creatives combined. And it did this at an incredibly profitable ROAS of 2.5. So this is why when you're testing creatives, you have to make sure each one gets a certain level of spend before you make that decision of whether or not it's a loser or a winner. Because Facebook can be wrong. A lot of times it's actually wrong and it will optimize your spend to a creative it likes, but that doesn't end up being the winning creative. And honestly, I have countless examples of testing campaigns where they start as CBOs and it doesn't work because Facebook loves to play favorites and thinks and knows what creative is going to be the best, but it oftentimes just picks the wrong one. So you have to do ABO to guarantee spend to each creative and make sure they all have an equal and fair chance at the end of the day. So once you do ABO for your testing campaign, you're already on the right track. But I know the next thing you're probably thinking is, should I do interest or what country should I do? Or should I restrict that audience size and guide Facebook to choosing where it should show my ad to? Because we know, yeah, Facebook can sometimes be wrong. But this is where I would push back and argue that the smartest approach you can do when testing is just to get out of Facebook's way because they have 3 billion users. So they already know what all their users are doing and they have so many data points on everybody. So it's honestly a little bit naive to think you're gonna outsmart the billion dollar AI algorithm that's already had billions of ad spend, has all these campaigns, but somehow you and your little interest testing campaign of yeah, uh, I'm gonna have one ad set that has an interest or I'll do an interest stack. It's just so outdated and barbaric. It makes absolutely no sense because when you have these interests, it restricts your audience size, which means there's less people to show your ad to, which makes it more expensive. And even if this does work, you can't scale as far if you just did broad because broad has more people to show your ad to as well. So it just doesn't make any sense to me to think you're gonna outsmart the algorithm because at the end of the day, your creative is what does the targeting. If you have all women in your creatives, guess what? Facebook's smart. It's gonna show your ad to just women who are dealing with whatever it is that your product solves or gets rid of. So your creative is where you do the targeting. So in your hook, call out whoever your target audience is. If it's moms, call that out directly. If it's moms with back pain, call that out directly because that is what's gonna do the targeting and Facebook is gonna notice based on the interactions, based on who's clicking your ad, who it should then show your ad to next. So always in your ads, if you can disqualify people, so if certain people do not match the hook messaging and they keep scrolling, 
that's a good thing because a good hook should be specifically towards one person where there's millions of people like that person. So just to show you an example of what my testing campaigns actually end up looking like with my 20 different creatives is I have four ad sets for each message. So as you can see right here, we have a three reasons why it's a video and we have all five ads inside. And if you want to know the exact settings, I usually just do $20 for the ABO. I don't really care when it launches because that's irrelevant. And then I always keep it as broad as possible. 18 to 65, all genders, all targeting, just again, get out of Facebook's way, give it all the tools at its disposal so that it can get you the best results possible. And of course, if you give it a ton of creatives, that also is going to maximize your chance of making that product work. So very simple setup. It's not too complicated. Just have an ad set for each one of the angles that you're testing. Now, obviously setting up the testing campaign is the easy part, but once you're spending your hard earned money and you're watching it completely burn up and get eaten by Mark Zuckerberg, that's when usually you start to panic and you don't have any rules. You don't have any logic for when you should kill or when you should scale. It's really just based on gut feeling and emotions. A lot of times it's, Oh, I'm going to give it two to three days. And if it doesn't get the results I want, then I'm going to move on to the next product. Which again, it sounds good in theory, but as we discussed earlier, you can have a campaign that runs for five days and your winning creative might only get a dollar or two of spend. So the, what the smart media buyer does is they have exact rules for each creative of how much they should spend before you make a decision of whether you want to kill it or scale it. And this is going to be the most valuable part of this video, because if you check the pinned comment down below, you'll get access to this KPI calculator where all you have to do is just plug in the numbers of your product. So if I'm selling a product for 50 and it costs me $15 and let's say I want a 25% profit margin, then that means each creative needs to spend at least $7 and at $7 and 84 cents, if it doesn't get an ad to cart, then sure you can kill that creative. And then the next level, if it spends $12 with that initiate checkout, cool, you can kill that creative. And then the final level, if it spends $21 in this case with these numbers, then you can kill that creative instead of just saying, Oh, I gave it three days here with each one of these creatives. So I'm just going to kill all of them that don't actually have a sale. But Hey, this one only spent six. This one only spent three. You didn't give it enough time to actually know if that creative could have been a winner. So going by those numbers, this creative spent $13. So we know at seven, if it doesn't have an ads cart, we're going to kill it. And as you can see, it doesn't have an ads cart. So therefore we can kill it. And we probably would have saved a bit more money if we were a little bit more vigilant on top of it. But that's how you know exactly to the number when you should kill versus when you should scale. And for me, just the most basic rule when it comes to this is each creative in my head has to spend at least $5. And at $5, if I don't get at least two link clicks or an ads cart or a purchase, Yes, I will kill the creative a little bit early because it's very rare that I'll have a creative that spends, yeah, $5, but only gets one link click and it somehow ends up performing well. So definitely make sure to use that KPI calculator for all of your future product tests. And if you are enjoying what you're hearing so far, then definitely consider subscribing because I only drop bangers every single week on the latest strategies and resources that I give completely free to you that I'm personally using to scale my brands over seven figures a year. So again, if you enjoy, definitely leave a like and subscribe for future videos. And then if you're wondering how to set up your columns, this is what I personally like, where it's just thought of as a funnel. So you're going to spend money, then you're going to have people see your ad. So that's your CPM. Frequency is just how often someone sees your ad. So I typically like that to be below 1.2 when initially testing. Hook rate, hold rate, those are just metrics for your video ads. And then of course, link clicks. Typically, I'm aiming for a dollar to a dollar fifty when it comes to this. When it comes to landing page views, I want at least 90 to 95 percent of those link clicks to become a landing page view. So people that actually make it to your product page. CTR, honestly, it's pretty irrelevant, but two to three percent is a good mark to aim for. And then of course, your ads cards purchases, that is completely dependent on the numbers of your product. All right, so now that your campaign is running and you know it doesn't matter how many days it's been running, it's all based on how much spend each creative is getting, because we want to make sure each creative gets at least five dollars to spend. What do you actually do when you have a creative that is performing above expectations? So in this case, we can see right here, we have this ad that spent 156 and it is at a profitable ROAS. So what are the next steps in this case? And when should you start scaling? Well, for me, my general rules is once a creative has at least three plus purchases and is profitable, that is when I'm going to try to increase the spend and start implementing my scaling strategies. So I really only focus on two ways of scaling. I think it's incredibly simple. I like consolidating things. So the first thing I would do is with that creative inside the ad set that it's currently operating in, I would increase the spend. So usually I'm doing 25% to 50% budget increases after each good day. So if this was the ad set that creative was in, I would just up the budget from 20 to $30. So a 50% budget increase. And if you're wondering, well, if I do that and it then starts to dip in performance, what do I do? I usually then will just lower it by 25 to 50%. So just after each good day, increase budget by 25 to 50%. After each bad day, I usually lower it by 25 to 50%. That is a very simple, basic rule that will serve you throughout your media buying journey, honestly. 
But then the other way that you can scale a creative, and this is my favorite way, is take that creative and duplicate it into a scaling campaign. I usually do Advantage Plus, and all of my winning creatives will go into this Advantage Plus. But with it, this is a very key thing, and we talked about this earlier on the video. If you're just all willy-nilly and you kill things after a day or two, you don't usually give it enough time to optimize and let Facebook find your target audience. So when it comes to scaling creatives, I will always do an ASC, and I usually will let it run for seven days, no matter what the performance is. So we go right here, we do new campaign, we do ASC, and then we do our winning ads. And obviously, if you have multiple winning ads, same thing, I just put both of them into this one campaign. So I have a dedicated campaign for testing, and then a dedicated campaign for scaling. In terms of ad sets, I really just have one ad set going on, and that will be the one that hosts all of our different winning ads. So we're gonna click duplicate right here, and then again, this is going to be a CBO, because you already know these are winning ads. So therefore, Facebook can then allocate your budget to whatever creative is actually performing the best because you're not in the testing phase anymore. You're in the can these creatives scale phase. So that's completely different. So in this case, we're going to go back to our campaign settings here. We are actually going to use campaign budget instead. We want to make sure this is an ASC. And then because we're going to let it run for seven days, you need to also plan for the worst case scenario. If this spends for seven straight days and doesn't get a purchase, can you withstand that in your budget? So typically, I actually start this at between $50 to $100 because then worst case scenario, okay, we spent $50, you times that by seven, it's $350. Bucks. Worst case scenario, you don't get a sale, but it's very rare. But best case scenario, what typically happens is that when you launch this campaign, the first few days, it's going to perform bad first two to three days. And you're going to get the urge to kill it. But I implore you, my friend, if you just wait, you will reach the promised land. Once you get to day four, five, six, and seven, usually by that point, Facebook finds the creative it wants to spend the right money to, and it finds the right audience to show your ad to as well. And then that's when it starts to get consistent because this campaign, when you give it those seven days, I have seen it crank for weeks and months on end. In fact, my student Izzy, how he got to a million dollars with his dropshipping brand is he just has these two campaigns. And that ASC campaign, initially when he launched it, wasn't performing great. But he gave it time and he kept putting his new winning cribs in his testing campaign and graduated them into this winning ASC. And then that campaign got more budget as it kept performing and kept having good days to the point where he's spending thousands of dollars a day on that one campaign. And that's all he needs. He doesn't need to have 20, 30 different campaigns, ASC, bid caps, cost caps. It's as simple as testing campaign. And once you have a winner, you graduate into the scaling campaign. So at this point, you may be wondering, okay, what do I do when I want to test new creatives to obviously get new winning ads that I can push to that ASC campaign? Well, for me, as you mentioned, I only like to have two campaigns. So in this testing campaign, as you can see, there's a lot of ad sets. There's 184 of them. And each ad set is a new batch of four to five ads. So whenever I have four to five new ads, which is usually just one message with four to five different hooks, I will create a new ad set. I'll give it $20 a day of spend. And then I'll let each one of those creators get to those certain spend thresholds before I start killing or potentially scaling them. So that's all you need to do. You have your one testing campaign. And then when it comes to scaling, whenever you get a new winner, same process. You duplicate it into that ASC campaign that's already active. So you may be saying, then won't I have 20, 30, potentially 50 creatives inside that one ASC? Yes, because that gives Facebook all the ammunition it needs to then spend your budget on whatever creative is thriving on that day. That's the most important part. Give it all the supplies it needs to thrive. And then as you get more winning ads, usually that means you can keep pushing your budget higher and higher and higher to thousands of dollars a day in that one campaign, which I know sounds crazy. But again, check that whole interview I have with Izzy. His scaling campaign has 50 plus winning ads inside that one. So before I give you the free resource that tells you exactly when you should kill or scale your ads to the dollar amount, as we mentioned earlier, you need to have winning ads to begin with. Otherwise, this whole process really doesn't even matter. So if you want to get access to all of my proven ad templates, image ads, video ads, and AI prompts that I use to have AI write my scripts for me to scale my brands over seven figures a year, but more importantly, that my students are also using to scale, like Rainier, to over $100,000 a month, then click the first link in the description down below and apply to work with me. My team and I will give you six calls a week where we'll hold your hand through picking the right products, creating the right offers, and of course, creating the ads that allow you to scale, like Marco, to over over $3,000 a day within his first few weeks of joining the program. So again, if you want to get insane results just like Marco and Rainier or Izzy, then click the first link in the description down below and apply to work with me. So now that you know exactly how to test and how to
how to scale your ads, really the final bottleneck at this point is just getting more winning creatives. So when you already have a winning ad, what should you do in that instance? Well, as you can see right here with this chart, if I'm testing four different messages and let's say the be a green flag angle ends up being the winner, then the next thing you have to do from now on is just make more variations. So in this case, you can do new hooks, so a new visual paired with a new script, but it has the same ideal message of just being a green flag. Or you can have the same hook that worked and then try a new problem or trying to mix up the length of the ad or trying a new voiceover if you're doing AI. So it's just making one variable switch to make a new variation of that ad that could potentially outperform the original winner. That is the whole goal of trying to make more winners. Try to increase it from, okay, here's version 1.0 of my winning ad to then get to version 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. And then of course, when you have the right message, the other thing you want to do, and this is usually a weekly thing, is make two to four new frameworks with the same message. So let's say you did a how-to ad, which was the be a green flag angle. Well, try then a problem solution framework or try an image ad with that same message and see how that performs so that you have a completely new framework that you're trying as well because it's not usually the framework that makes the ad a winner. It's the message that you try. So you can always see with big brands, a lot of times they keep saying the same message over and over and over again but they do it in different frameworks to keep that idea fresh. And then finally from there, you can obviously go from just using rip content to custom content. I usually like Incense, TikTok, Shop, Fiverr, all these places are the best where then you can have your detailed scripts and get new visuals that you can try to again, keep getting new winning ads that you will throw in to your testing campaign to actually get them proven. But then once they're proven, you graduate them into that scaling ASC. So that's really all you need to know on the media buying front. Use that KPI calculator, as I mentioned earlier, because that will give you the exact data on to the dollar amount when you should kill and when you should scale those creatives. And of course, make sure to watch this video next because this is what YouTube is going to recommend to you to give you the next best amount of value. And I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below.